time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, And in this episode, I will be showing you how to create your own passive amplification device for your iPhone 6. Now you might be asking yourself, why not just buy a Bluetooth speaker? Well, the answer is because 3D printer, duh. Also, today's video is brought to you by Squarespace.com. If you guys aren't familiar with Squarespace, they allow you to get up and running quickly with your own blog, website, or e-commerce site by simply starting with selected templates and building from there. You don't need any prior knowledge to use their service and get up and running fast with a professional looking site. Now, I've been using them for two years on my own shop.barnard.com site where I sell these t-shirts. And they allow you to do inventory management. They give you reports. They even allow you to interface with services like Stripe to take orders and manage all that. And you can even delegate certain tasks and level of access to other people to have them improve your site and to help you with the operation. They've been an absolute godsend. If you guys would like to try them out, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Barnacles and also be sure to use code Barnacles to get 10% off your first order. Okay, so the first thing we need for this project is the 3D model. Now to download that 3D model, you're gonna need to open your favorite web browser, which in my case is Google Chrome, but I would love to hear what your favorite web browser is down in the comments. You wanna navigate over to www.thingiverse.com. Now Thingiverse is a huge repository of 3D models that are created by people like you and I, and then uploaded so that the community can download it and print these things and share pictures and videos and things like that. It's actually a really cool community. Now there's a lot of other other sites out there that are like it and I'll try to link some of them in the video description but I would attribute Thingiverse um, to 3D models like Google is to search engines it's pretty much the best and most well-known repository out there now you want to click on the search box up here and we're gonna do a search for Grammy phone that is the 3D model that we're interested in and you can see there's two different versions here if you have an iPhone 5 somebody modified the original iPhone 6 version so now there's two different versions that you can use now you can tell that the iPhone 5 isn't the original because it was up uploaded on February 1st, 2016, whereas the Gramophone iPhone 6 version, which is the newer phone, was uploaded on November 5th, 2015, so it's actually the older model. Another way that you can tell is if you click on the on the model that was derived, you can go down and read that he thanks and gives attribution to the original creator when he uploads it, and this is a nice thing to do. You guys should always give credit if you use somebody else's work. Now, we want the iPhone 6, so we're going to click on this, and it was created by Bryce low right here and it's cool you can actually click on his name and go and look at his profile it says that he's an engineer professional and maker Ooh. now you can see there's a couple of pictures from the original designer that you can click on to show you what it should look like after it's printed and there's some pictures that are created by the site itself to show you what the 3d model looks like now if we look down here in the summary you can see that he actually issued an update for a rev 2 base where he removed this hollow part here in the center to make it easier to print without support. And that's gonna be the model that we're printing. So you're gonna to wanna to come over to download this thing and click on that and then it's gonna tell you about the license. It says that he does allow you to remix and change it. And he said commercial use is not allowed. So like for instance, I couldn't print these and sell them. All right, so now that I've downloaded the 3D model and decompressed it into a folder, you can see there are three files. There's a horn base file, there's the horn horn file, and then there's the rev2 base. Now this is the one we're gonna print and I'll show you why. So I went ahead and opened up the Cura software which you can see back here, which is the Slicer by Altimaker. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with a Slicer, it's what takes a 3D model and converts it into hundreds of layers stacked on top of each other to make a three-dimensional object. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drag in the original base, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Now, I'll tell you right now, the files are not in the correct orientation. So we do have to correct the orientation before we print them because they do load at a weird angle. But you can see on this model here that there's a big void here in the center, which means we would have to use support material. And we don't want to do that because that could clog up our little pipe here. And the pipe's so small, I don't believe it needs support material. All right, so let's go ahead and clear that platform. And we're going to go ahead and pull in the Rev2 base. And you can see the design changes. They filled everything in right here, so it no longer needs support. So first thing we need to do is change the orientation of this part. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to come down to rotate. And I'm going to grab this axis and switch it 90 degrees. And now you can see it's sitting flat on the base. Now that is pretty much ready to print as is. Now I'm gonna set it to a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And the reason for that being is I don't need this to be a really high detailed part. Now, if I wanted to use it as a showpiece, we could go down to 0.1 millimeter, but that's gonna double the print time. I went ahead and upped my fill density to 60% because I want this to be a pretty strong and heavy duty part. I don't want it to just blow away in the wind. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my print speed at 50 on the Ultimaker, even though you can easily print it, you know, push it up to 80 or 100. I just want this to print kind of low and slow. 
low. Now for this particular model, we do not need any support. We do not need any platform adhesion because it has this huge base surface on it down here. It's gonna have really, really good adhesion to the build platform. And I don't see any overhangs here that are a real concern. Like for instance, if you come up here and switch to the overhang view and we look around, you can see the only little overhang is slightly under the edge here on both sides and then there's a little bit of overhang in the tube but because the tube is round i think it's going to be able to bridge that with no problem all right so this part is ready to print let's send it over to the 3d printer Okay, now that the base is done, we need to print the horn. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag the horn into Kura. And you can see it's at a really weird angle. If you try to print it like that, obviously it's not gonna work. It's gonna break the platform adhesion and just fall over immediately. So we need to reorient this part. So we're gonna go ahead and click on it and do a rotation. And we're just gonna drag it around until it's flat down on its face. This is the best orientation to print it on. You can see there are no longer any overhangs. Now I plan to leave the settings the same for the horn here. But the one thing I will recommend is that you come down to platform adhesion type over here and we're gonna change that to brim. And the reason I wanna put a brim on it is it's gonna force it to print a wider base so that it sticks. Because if you look at how small the lip is on this thing, it might curl and pop off the platform without the brim. So I just don't wanna risk it. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on there. All right, let's send this over to the 3D printer. All right, here we have the two completed pieces off the printer. They were both printed in Ultimaker Pink PLA. Now, both pieces turned out good. There was a little deformation on the base, but that was because I was experimenting with a new filament cleaning and oiling method, which I'm gonna be making a future video on. Um, and I got a little crazy with the oil. You don't want too much oil on the filament because it'll cause adhesion problems and some warping issues. Otherwise, these things printed out beautifully. Now, obviously, assembly is super easy. You just slide the horn into the pipe and that's it. And then you just take your iPhone 6, like I have right here, and just slide it right in. And everything fits. Like a glove. It still just blows my mind the tolerances these desktop 3D printers are getting. It's just, it's nuts. Oh, and the funnel has a dual purpose too. All right, so now that we printed it, we should probably test it and see if it works. So I thought it'd be a good idea to take it outside where I could actually get some distance away from the phone. And then I would let you guys be the judge. Okay, so here we have the phone just laying on a sewer grate at the far end of my yard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk away from it so that you guys can hear how much the sound diminishes as I walk away.
All right, so clearly it's louder with the horn. I mean, that's that's. I think that's undeniable. I, I would even go as far as to say the video you just watched didn't even really do it justice, just as far as the sound difference between just the phone and sitting in the cradle with the horn. I mean, it's night and day difference. <laughs> But there is a huge trade-off and you probably noticed in the video clip that there is a lot more treble and not a lot of bass when you're using the horn. When you just have the phone out, you get more of an omnidirectional sound that seems to go in more directions and it's not as loud but you get a little bit of bass and you get a little bit of mid. Well, as much as you'd expect from a cell phone, right? They don't have a lot to begin with. So obviously I wouldn't consider this good for listening to music. It really isn't unless you want to sound like you're listening to classical music on some AM frequency or an old like Vitrola or whatever. <laughs> with the hand crank on the side of it. So from that perspective, I don't think it's a huge success. But if you want to be able to hear sound like notifications or if you're like listening to an ebook or something like this, this is great to have a passive amplification device and it works great outside. I also like the fact that when you pull the horn out of it, it still sounds pretty good. You don't get the range of sound, but you definitely get more of the fidelity of the sound just with this little hole pointing towards you. And that way the phone is upright on a stand sitting on your desk and you're getting that audio blasted right at your face. And it sounds a lot better than just having the phone laying flat on the desk. But guys, as far as a passive amplification device goes, it definitely works. It is a really cool idea and boy, it's a conversation piece. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this 3D print. If you did, please slap a like on this video. It really, really helps me out. And if you have any ideas on how to improve this design, please leave them down in the comments and I will forward them on to the author. Also, if you guys want to see more 3D printing videos, please let me know. It's something that I backed away from for a long time and now I'm finally getting my makerspace back up. I think I've got seven 3D printers and a CNC machine and I've got lots of ideas, but I want to make sure that you guys are into it and that you're enjoying it. And the only way I know that is if you guys slap that like button and let me know down in the comments. Now also remember this is an open design which means you can go out to Thingiverse right now and copy the design and modify it for any phone that you want. If you have any kind of basic skills and any kind of software that can modify STL files you can go in and take the measurements and make this fit like an LG G4 or one of the Samsung phones or one of the bigger phones or even some of the smaller phones or like an 80s Nokia flip phone. If you, really, if you really wanted to. But that is what makes 3D printing so great. A lot of people keep asking me, are 3D printers just novelty? Well, you'd think so from a lot of the stuff I print. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give you that one. But the thing that 3D printing really excels at is allowing you to take your imagination and turn it into reality. And you ultimately can create some pretty amazing things. If you guys want, there's a playlist down in the video description of all my past really popular 3D printing videos that should demonstrate to you without a shadow of a doubt that these things are incredibly useful and can be used for utility as well as fun. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time. It really does work. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>